tonight. I'm going to lead you through a, um, a bit of an overview of the exhibition and delve into William Young's practice uh, and the show titled Seeing and Being Seen. So William is uh, an Australian photographer. Uh, he's made a very significant contribution to Australian photography and also, of course, Australian art in particular. He um, is a photographer. Uh, he also is a performance artist. He uh, does slide nights, essentially, where he's advancing through his photographs um, and telling the stories behind his photographs and what sets his photography apart particularly as well is that he scribes the stories of the photographs um, onto, onto the actual work. And so William, I see, is very much a storyteller. He, uh, this is kind of his early, so we start with his early period um, and some of his works, he has a complete fascination with people. And some of the themes that I'll be taking you through this evening is his insights into the LGBTQI community. Um, also his Chinese and sort of he, William thinking out his identity uh, as a gay man, and also an exploration of his Chinese Australian heritage. Um, and then right through to his landscape photography. So William draws on his lived experience. And um, I will, these few, these few uh, pictures particularly are from his family archive. And so these are, these are portraits that are found. So he's their sort of found photography, but also his own photography. Uh, and he was born in far north Queensland in Maribra and uh, grew up in Bumbula and moved to Sydney in um, 1969 and completely found the artistic community there and has lived and worked in Sydney ever since. And a lot of his works are informed by these experiences. So particularly these early works are thinking out his childhood and I'll go back to this work particularly. Actually, I should say, first of all, please don't worry if you can't read any of the text on the images. Yeah, um, there's a lot of text. And so if you can read it, great. If you can't, no worries. If there's something important, I'll, I'll read them out. So this is a, an early um, story that William tells of being in primary school. And he was uh, essentially another boy in, in school, chanted a racist rhyme, um, which started Ching Chong Chinaman. And William actually didn't know that he had Chinese heritage. He didn't particularly know that he was Chinese Australian. And in this story, he goes back and asks his mum, he says, Mum, I'm not Chinese, am I? And she said, yes, you are. And from this, he realised from the tone and the conversation that happened, being Chinese was a terrible curse and so his family really encouraged him and his siblings to be more Australian than the Australians and deny their Chinese heritage uh, and it starts here of William talking and uh, thinking back on this particular past and realizing how formative this experience is uh, and a very key work, which is this series called My Uncle's Murder, which is what informed a lot of uh, essentially how his mother felt he, she should bring up uh, the kids in the family. So in this work, William travels back to his hometown of Dimbula and to really to understand a very painful event that happened in his family's past. Uh, this was a story that wasn't spoken about very much in the family. Um, and it really was swept under the carpet and decided that it was best not talked about. So in 1922, well before William was born, his uncle, William Fung Nguyen, was murdered. And William Fung Nguyen was um, a cane farmer. He owned a cane farm and he was quite well to do and he was, uh, uh, had good standing in the community as well. And the manager of his cane farm, the white manager, Peter Danichenko, uh, essentially they argued 
um, and it was over the, the weight of the cane and it looked like um, Peter Danilchenko was cooking the books. Uh, and William's uncle confronted him about this and uh, he was murdered. And the white um, owner, the, sorry, the white farm manager went to trial over this murder of William's uncle and he was not punished. It was found that he had murdered him, but because he had only murdered a Chinaman, he was not punished. Uh, and I'll just read a really a quote here that from this particular work, and William says, I stood in the place where my uncle had been shot and I tried to put all the stories together. They didn't make sense. But there was one thing they all agreed on. This is all of his family that he talked to. And it was this. The Chinese at the time were very upset and about the outcome of the trial. They thought it was a great miscarriage of justice. And so he goes back to archives to understand this story. And while this is a very personal story of a particular incident that happened in William's family, uh, William is very aware of essentially re revisiting the Australian historical narrative and the narrative in Australia that often overlooks stories of racial injustice and overlooks stories of marginal communities, um, particularly when those stories are born of racial prejudice. And so this segues into a very major theme that William has of exploring his Chinese identity. And this is William in performance mode. He's wearing a scholar's costume and he's kind of performing being Chinese. So as I was mentioning, he grew up in a family who disavowed this heritage and they did so because of those really formative incidences that essentially said, the best thing to do is to assimilate and to just completely forget your Chinese heritage and try to be Australian because they felt that it was a liability uh, and wasn't until he was in his 40s and he met um, a woman, a young Taiwanese woman, who was very proud of her heritage, that uh, she embraced um, Taoism and taught William Taoism. And then uh, he was born as William Young in 1943, so Young, Y-O-U-N-G, and actually changed his name to the Chinese transliteration, Y-A-N-G, the same pronunciation, but it was part of this embracing of a Chinese heritage and a process of reclaiming that heritage. And uh, I'll just read a, a little snippet from this work, which in William says, people at the time called me born again Chinese. And that's not a bad description as there was a certain zealousness to the process. But now I see it as a liberation for racial suppression. And I prefer to say I came out as Chinese. William also traveled to China as part of this period, um, thinking out ideas of home. And as you see here, people said to him in China, you've come back home. Uh, and he also traveled across Australia. Um, taking the stories of people that uh, were that the Chinese Australians across Australia, um, they captured not only the artist's kind of inner narrative, the stories that he was telling at the time, but also the relationship that he was forming between both cultures in China, Chinese in Australia, and thinking out his ideas of home and where he belonged. And this is William in China, again, thinking out those ideas of what was sacred to him and what was important in his, to his artistic practice. About My Mother is a really key work. Uh, it's a series of photographs and it's in the Queensland Art Gallery collection. Um, and as an artist who takes a lot of portraiture, as a photographer who takes a lot of portraiture, he often has personal insights into private lives. And William Young often walks the line between uncovering what are really beautiful truths, but also revealing sometimes uncomfortable, quite intimate details about a person. And he always walks that line between um, really showing the real story 
and how much a person wants to reveal about their story. And this is his mother. Uh, and he, I particularly love this piece in which he says, I wrote about the family. I was indiscreet. I mentioned Aunt Betty's boyfriend. I mentioned her will. No one of my mother's generation ever talked about their wills in public. My mother was very angry with me. Then she said, I'm not worthy enough to be written about. And I think it could be argued that William's entire practice is very focused on this sentiment and is a refutation of this sentiment. And he balances the importance of revealing details about a person to really tell the real stories uh, and acknowledge ex experiences and voice, uh, voices of marginalised communities in particular. And he, he often puts the emphasis on how individual stories are much more important than the mainstream understanding of a particular culture or a particular um, marginalised marginalized community. And this is here just to kind of acknowledge that a lot of these stories that are written um, directly onto the photographs began as oral stories. They, he's very much in the oral tradition of storytelling of this slide night with um, stories. His spoken word performances are very beautiful. And so we go into a particular passion of Williams, which is social portraits. So while he was at the University of Queensland, so this is back very early days, Williams still in Queensland, he wrote and directed theatre productions and he began to take photographs at the time. He started photographing architecture because he actually studied architecture at university. And then he turned his camera on people and it's where he found his true passion. And in order to make a living as a photographer, he started um, taking candid shots of beautiful people and parties um, for the social pages of newspapers and would sell them to newspapers and magazines. But this was his entryway very much into the artistic community and he found kindred spirits there. Uh, and the essentially, William's work has these beautiful qualities of telling very serious and very important stories, but also being completely joyous and playful. And it's really about the, the thing that brings those two together is this passion for people and to tell stories of people, particularly. You know, they're very good friends of William's. They're also um, obviously portraits where he's asked someone to sit for him. Um, uh, particularly photographers, he um, um, uh, at exhibitions, behind the scenes in theatre. Um, very interested in getting the unguarded moment, the playfulness. And often you, you'll see a lot of these uh, images uh, people relating to William. It's about that exchange um, of ideas, but also that exchange of connection and, you know, just being people together. Uh, and this is his lovely photo of William, but to give you a sense of how the um, exhibition is hung as well, is this profusion of people, you know, what is on the wall is just a fraction of William's archive. And it's something that has he's done from the very beginning of his career and has continued throughout and he's still taking um, social portraits. Not so much selling to magazines these days, but it's something that he loves to do and something that he's often documenting when he's um, at, at events. And so as part of this documentation, he um, got to be very close friends with a number of artists. Um, obviously, Patrick White is one of the most venerated art writers in Australia. Um, a playwright uh, was the first Australian to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature. He was also notoriously prickly, uh, and it was known that he had a very small inner circle of friends and that he would fall in and out of friendship um, or friends that would fall in and out of favour throughout um, his life. 
And William became one of the chosen few that was allowed backstage to the theatre productions, but also into his home in this domestic setting. Uh, and in, into the private gatherings in Patrick's home. And William's photographs capture was a really interesting warmth that uh, a, sort of an, a not usually publicly seen aspect of Patrick White. And it really is a testament to, and in, in particular, I think Patrick really enjoyed the fact that William took Patrick and his partner Manoli here, as you can see, together. They didn't have a lot of photographs together. Um, and it's a testament to the relationship that was built of trust between William and Patrick. Uh, this is a particularly fun story as well, where Patrick and William are in a very, well, Patrick particularly is in a really playful mode where he asked William to take a um, photograph for the jacket of one of his forthcoming novels that was to be released. And he wanted to do the shoot in drag and his drag persona of Alex Xenophon. And he wanted to stage a death scene. And so they set it up in a, a hospital and um, he, William got into drag as Alex Xenophon, but then they realized that afterwards that the pictures didn't really look like Alex, they more looked like Patrick. And so William here is very playfully kind of inserting cats and other religious iconography to, to playfully stage this picture. The publisher saw it and saw their shoot of um, William, if Patrick in drag and said, no, <laughs> it's not a good idea. That, that shouldn't be on the dust jacket. And so none of the pictures really made it out except this one, this one image. So the beach was a particular passion for William, especially when he first moved from Brisbane. You know, when Brisbane was really quite conservative, um, he moved to Sydney and there was like, there were beaches and beautiful landscapes and uh, it really could blossom in Sydney. And, in, and the beach is this perfect combination of people and landscape. Landscape being one of William's really key themes. It's something that we wanted to do uh, as part of this exhibition was to bring together uh, the variety of themes that William explores. Um, he's not always particularly known as a landscape photographer, but landscape is very present in his work and has been, you know, from the get-go and really early on. And many of William's beach scenes present what is quite while there are some very classic um, beach shots, um, perhaps like this, of, that um, you would recognise through Australian photographers, um, what William brings to the beach photography is not so much the bronzed female bodies or recreational pursuits, but he really takes immense joy in a male figure. And uh, I really love that this is kind of a queer men's of this very um, desirous male gaze on very desirable male bodies and playful. Which takes us into um, the male body, which, uh, and while, and this is a series of, um, within the exhibition, this series of uh, portraits of um, male, the male body and often nudes. And while this beauty in these portraits, the overarching theme is much more about the relationship between the photographer and the person in the image and the importance of the story behind the image, particularly the story behind the glossy surface. And William is really acutely aware of public perceptions of human bodies and particularly the heavy burden that uh, of cliche representation that marginalised communities have. So in this section, um, talk about uh, in particularly uh, Asian Australian bodies, but also bodies from the queer community. And he really confront, confronts some of those mainstream myths uh, about this. For this instance, I particularly love this image, a couple, which is a couple portrait. And it really celebrates softness and connection um, and is a really nice, just 
real and nuanced uh, essentially representation of a gay relationship which is often characterized as brash or one-dimensional in mainstream media and here there's lovely softness and very personal um, intimacy within the bedroom setting. And this is a really lovely uh, work that came out of um, so this is a photograph that was taken in 2016 and over the course of the exhibition, Ben Law very kindly uh, wrote an essay for the publication that was published uh, alongside the exhibition. And William liked some of the words in the essay so much that he decided to describe that directly onto one of his works to make a new work. And um, William, uh, Ben's words are, William Young's great superpower is his ability to disarm cheeky charm that ensure people are comfortable. One moment you're talking about work and gossiping about friends, the next you're shirtless and down to your jocks as he snaps away. And which brings me to another really important theme about community and William's exploration, not just of his sexual identity, but the LGBTIQ community. And William really started, picked up his camera um, in the early 1970s and really started documenting his communities, that being the artistic community, Chinese, but also particularly the queer community. Uh, and this was at a time where um, the queer community were fighting for visibility and rights. In the, early, in the early 70s through to the 80s particularly. So it's this incredibly rich archive that he ha that William has um, of, of this community and in particular um, the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras Parade. And which I'll take you through a few of these key works um, from the really early days through to um, very recent times. And so this, the way that William has documented his community are through um, as social events and parties in particular as uh, spaces, really safe spaces of self-expression, uh, but also couple portraits. And uh, in particular, he has documented AIDS crisis, which of course hit many communities, but with the queer community in particular, William was very interested in exploring the personal stories behind this. Um, he's never shied away from the real stories of queer life. So, you know, really from like sexy, really raucous celebration, right through to really sober reflections on the illness. This particular um, uh, series is one of William's best known works, which is called Alan. And Alan is this beautiful story across 19 photographs of his uh, former lover, very good friend, Alan, uh, who he bumped into in the AIDS ward. And it talks about Alan's progress as the, uh, he is HIV positive, and it talks about his progress throughout the illness. But it also talks about his desire to make work, um, his connection with his friends, his connection to William, and it humanises Alan. And this was something that was made as a response to what was really quite hysterical media reporting of the AIDS crisis at the time. Uh, and when you think back to this particular time, uh, you know, some of these people who died of AIDS-related complications were pariahs. They were, um, they died, you know, their friends, their families rejected them, some, some. Uh, and this really challenged mainstream perceptions. William's work is challenging mainstream perceptions of AIDS and the LGBTQI community. And I feel that they're considered, they could be considered acts of activism just as much as they're considered acts of compassion is about humanizing this story and making this a personal story about a particular person and not just reducing this to a topic. And so the way that 
these works are hung in the show is they're very deliberately hung side by side to talk about the real stories of queer life, which is full of real people that have joyous and amazing celebration of identity through to really sobering reflections on the AIDS crisis, but also the community that came to welcome and support and help people through those processes and the fact that community is such an essential part of queer life. Which the next I'll work, talk a little bit about lay self-portraits. So a lot of William's work is self-portraits. He has a very diaristic practice where he's thinking out where he is in a time and a place. I would also say his landscapes are quite diaristic in that way, in that he's thinking out um, where he is and the narratives that he writes on his landscapes again are, are uh, kind of inner dialogues. And so he's he constantly explored self-portraiture throughout his whole uh, five decades of the of his practice. And he mines other people's lives for deeply personal insights. But a really key process of his work when he's revealing quite intimate details of other people, when they are owning their story and he's scribing their story onto, onto the work, he also is doing this for himself. So he turns this process on himself. And this is a really important part of his practice to, to this balance. So it's a really important foundation. So this emotional reciprocity. If he can do this uh, important work of bringing his inner narrative, it's just as valid to have, you know, alongside other people's. And this brings me through to, in actually, I would just quickly say that in his later self portraits, he's very reflective. He's thinking about uh, aging, but he's also has this hard won self knowledge. Uh, in this particular one, he's talking about his family. He went to visit his family in um, Orange County in the USA. And as you can see here, he says, I quite like this photo. It's close to how I imagine myself. Thoughtful, not extroverted, not bitter. Finally being satisfied with my lot. And not young either. I would never call myself handsome, but people have told me I've gotten better looking as I've gotten older. And I would agree with that. I have become more fulfilled in myself. And I think also it's important to talk about the language in which William talks. It's often um, quite poetic. It's often very um, measured. And while very personal, it's, it, it's really preference, preferences being um, this lovely poetic, almost conversational style. So while a lot of his narratives could be um, confronting, you know, when you're talking about racial injustice and when you're talking about, um, you know, marginalised communities that have suffered, uh it's this very this register that is very easy to relate to and it is very personal and it is just about having that personal connection between viewer um it's a conversation between viewer and artist and so landscape is something that williams work um it's he's not always known for his landscapes but He's a very beautiful landscape photographer. Um, and it's integral to William's practice. As I was mentioning, this diaristic process. So William is taking landscapes as he's either traveling for his work. So in, um, for example, when he was traveling around Australia, uh, taking photographs of the Chinese Australian community, he was taking photographs of, um, people but also places so places in the landscape that had a particular significance to Chinese um, cultural history such as you know shrines that were still standing um, or old mining shafts that had been mined by Chinese Australians and here he's sort of captured in this very 
beautiful, almost romantic um, image of the Australian landscapes. And I feel, um, and sometimes he's also within the landscape. Um, and often it's this uh, pose of embracing, um, embracing the landscape, embracing the natural um, setting. And I feel like he applies the same lens to, a land, to the landscape as he does to uh, people in that he's very attentive. He often talks about a personal connection. And if we go back to this one particularly, he's often up really close. You don't see a horizon line in this particular work because you're completely embedded in it. You're, you're having this very close um, viewpoint within the landscape, very deep within the landscape. And so it's this processing of social and physical environment um, is just as important within his, his big sweeping landscape works. I mean, here, again, it's a really good example of you could be standing on this road side by side with the photographer. You, it's about embedding yourself uh, into this landscape and the narrative is where he's uh, revisiting a past memory of this particular place and it's almost as if you were standing side by side on the road talking to one another and him and William recounting this to you. Uh, so I kind of have done an overview uh, of all of the themes, the kind of the key themes of William's work and I guess this is a good point to just ask if there were any questions, um, if anybody had any questions. And I just will bring up the chat. So please put your questions in the chat if you have anything that you would like to see. Uh, can I speak to William's artistic influences? Well, I guess I would talk I, I think one, um, I mean, other photographers have, have been quite an influence. I know that, uh, you know, Max de Payne was a big friend of Williams, but also um, I would also mention that oral history tradition um, and storytelling. I think William very much sees himself as a storyteller and that uh, theatre and um you know, that was something that was really key to William's work. Uh, and you said here, how did you curate the landscapes? The landscapes are actually really, it's very lovely in the space because these are very, they're much, they're quite big works and they're much bigger than most of the other works within the show. Uh, and these particular works were, some of them were actually quite small. Um, when they were first printed, but due to um, digital printing, you can really get them much bigger now. So again, it's very much that feeling of being within the landscape. And so the way that I that we selected this were uh, we did have a, a bit of a focus on Queensland because of um, you know the obviously William's history and connection to Queensland, the fact that we're in a Queensland Art Gallery, and that was something that we wanted to highlight but also works that were really um, speaking to William reckoning with his past and to thinking out his place in the world and that idea of uh, searching for home and that sense of belonging. I was also very interested in some of the works, um, landscape works, he's almost spiritual um, and really searching and reflective. And I love that register where he was really thinking out some of the his thoughts of Taoism and that idea of nature being in a sense of flow. And uh, that also really helped uh, guide the selection of, uh, of landscapes. Will the exhibition be traveling to other cities? Uh, at this stage, no, but um, watch this space. You know, William's work, I think um, it's, I think everybody feels it's so lovely to see it and it's a bit long overdue to have such a major survey of William's work in a, in a state gallery so um, 
very possibly you will see more. But this particular show, no, there are no plans at this particular um, at this particular time. So the Uluru landscape shot, that's obviously someone who has come into the exhibition. Uh, and Uluru landscape shot is uh, a work called Dawn Central Australia. And it sits at one of the entrances to the show, which it has four entrances. And it's a black and white work that is taken um, obviously at dawn. And so it's this incredible um, kind of strips of this deep velvety black uh, and for the earth and this lovely kind of soft light that's coming up and outlining Uluru and then this lovely velvety black of the sky and and it's the scale of it is is big and so you're it feels it's one of the works that as soon as I saw it um, I was like, it, it absolutely has to be in the show. How amazing. Um, and standing in front of it is this beautiful moment of stillness and reflection. And I would be, yeah, I just think uh, something that we were very lucky to be able to do is that um, we were able to remove the glass um, in front of the work so that you don't get any reflection and so you have this beautiful stillness in the works but you have to come into the show <laughs> to see that one. Can I talk about the process of choosing which photos were included in such a large collection? Very good question. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that William and I talked about most of all was refining and refining and refining. So it it isn't always the case that you can work so closely with, a, with an artist. And I was really privileged to be able to work very closely with William. We, uh, I visited him in his studio down in Sydney. Um, he came up and visited me at the gallery and we had this long ongoing conversation, lots and lots of Dropbox folders back and forth of selecting because William, again, also has such a fantastic grasp of his own archive and a lot of his work digitised. And we thought about uh, essentially a linear progression of the way that we might tell his, um, the story of his work, almost like the story of his life. But then we thought actually a stronger way to tell that would be to talk about the themes that he explored. And we kind of refined it that way. I mean, there are so many images that I would love to have included the show, but as it stands, there are so many works in the show. Uh, and I was really aware that obviously sometimes less is more. And because some of those works are, uh, you know, a lot of it is also to be read, but the time that people spend, I really wanted people to, not feel overwhelmed by the volume, but to be able to spend time and read some of those works. Uh, and so we refined it really by themes. And so when we kind of built some of those key themes, um, the works slotted in and we really, we wanted to create not just the, the well-known and the classic works, which of course are really important, but some, you know, some more playful pieces and some unexpected pieces as well. Um, the process of William writing on the images, uh, the insights. The, I guess, I'm not sure if this is quite the direction you wanted to take that uh, question, but um, a lot of the narratives that come that are eventually scribed, well, that are scribed onto the images, come out of William's oral storytelling tradition. Uh, and so they often start as the spoken word. William thinking out his relationships to his family, thinking out his relationships to friends and places. Um, and William with like in, in the 1990s in particular, actually and particularly internationally is is known very well um, as a performance artist uh, and he toured internationally extensively um, and so has told these stories many times, many, many times and refined the way his, not only his own, you know, personal thinking, but also the, the method and the way that he tells this story. And so what 
often uh, arrives on the photographs it is this very refined and um, beautifully succinct version of the story and uh, and they stood again this lovely balance of being very personal um, and intimate but quite conversational and inclusive it really brings you in and it kind of brings you in in a way that's really relatable and really um, it's about a shared humanity right Mm. Um, the, you know, I was curious about the juxtaposition of the Mardi Gras and celebratory images against Alan's story without an example of normal daily life in between since William did so much social photography was it just the high low comparison or something more at play curatorially yeah good question um, and they are kind of two extreme ends of the coin, or oh, no, not extremes, but they are, you know, particularly high register examples. Uh, and I guess the the daily life aspect are in other um, sections within the show. So they're in the social portraits or the male body or um, Chinese identity. And so this idea of portraits of the queer community and representation of the queer community, um, not just in the community uh, section within the show, but also throughout other kind of themes. And necessarily, you know, these, like all these themes in many ways are happening all throughout the arc of William's uh, career. And uh, in the way that, you know, it's in the way that it happens in life, right? You know, you do this thinking here and then you return to it later and then you return to it later. So, yes, we did put those sections into community that were kind of like high register marks, but in terms of representation, representations of queerness elsewhere, they are all throughout the show elsewhere. Uh, how are the reproductions made of the photos inscribed with text? Is it scanned? So, yes, some are written directly, like with a pen and ink, onto photographs. Um, but more recently, William has been writing digitally and um, placing that onto the photograph, and that's printed as a print. Um, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to, like, say definitive, um, but I think it was mainly because um, William just felt that the, then the photos had better longevity just in terms of archival process and the fact that the ink, you know, is, is changing over time. And so digitally it means that, um, you know, that photograph can be reprinted and will um, archive well for a long life. And I wanted to obviously there's... Um, the show <laughs> come and see the show come and spend some time it's a show to read as well as to to see so i so encourage you these are such you know i my background is actually in um film as much as you know, building exhibitions but i also have a lot of um curation uh experience in curating film programs and so it was such a joy for me to bring storytelling so present into a gallery space um, so I really recommend um, you come and, and read a few of these really really incredible writer um, but also we have a publication and if you want to know more this is the publication um, and a lot of these stories are printed in full but also um, I, some beautiful essays by great um, Professor Susan Best who talks about the idea of shames uh, and shamelessness in William's work. Um, Benjamin Law, who is such a beautiful writer, but also talks about that connection with William there as, a, as a close friend, but also um, that experience of growing up queer and Asian in, um, in Queensland. Uh, and William writes about his work as well. In particular, uh, there's a beautiful essay from William uh, thinking out his landscape works um, and uh, essentially just putting a spotlight into 
onto a, a section of William's work that is lesser known but equally as much weight as all of the other themes uh, of his work. And of course